All right, so we're recording now. Okay, the way we're doing this for this project finally is we are going to read our scenario for our group, and then we are going to have a discussion about it, and then we'll do a very quick role play at the end, and that's how this is going to go. So, Deborah, if you want to read yeah. our scenario. Sure. Uh, the construction phase of the park is almost complete. The only thing left is the installation of the asphalt along the graded path. The contractor would like to reduce the thickness of the path to one and a half inches instead of pouring the two inches as specified. She wants to do this because the depth of the rough grade was compromised by the tree root protection specification, necessitating additional grading beyond the area of the path. The path is primarily going to be used for walking with occasional maintenance vehicles. The park is adjacent to a school and a senior residence, so strollers and wheelchairs will also be uh, will also be users. The one and a half inch thickness will not be as durable as the two inches, so will have to be a short or will have a shorter lifespan. Anticipating that the path will deteriorate sooner than expected, she suggests that she will increase her material guarantee by one year. You are called in to approve the changes so that she can proceed. Okay. okay, so now we're just going to have our discussion over what our issue is and what um, as a whole might happen. And we're going to try to talk one at a time because the camera will switch to whoever's talking. So if we're interrupting a lot, it may be mayhem. So now we can just feel free to start talking about how this would work. All right, I'll go first. I think that it's a uh, legal issue. It, the, the protecting the trees was already spec. My understanding is that the, the protection of the trees was already spec and the thickness of the path was already spec. And if there was, um, if the contractor had an issue with that, they should have brought it up uh, months ago, not at the end of the project. And I would see it as that may be true, but um, there's a CD set that came from the office, and the problem would be created by the, basically it comes down to whoever's stamp is on the CD, authorizing that to go out for, it's already passed bid and it's up for construction. So the landscape architect is responsible for the two conflicting specs. So technically the contractor's legally bound to carry those two things out and um, basically kill the trees or have to kill the trees is basically if you carry out the two specs. So it's the landscape architect's fault. So I see why in the scenario, the contractor's coming back to them because if they do their job according to law, then it'll be messed up. So they're kind of given the landscape architect an opportunity. And it sounds like they're just gonna have to um, do a new grading plan and eat the cost of that to keep the contractor there longer than the bid previously planned. Um, would there be another option for a solution to either um, move the path or use a different material? Since the, the asphalt hasn't been laid yet. It sounds like it's already pretty thin. I would say either one of those are both just as costly as um, going ahead and regrading for what you already have planned because uh, the material, I can't imagine it would change that much for an inch and a half path with the material. And you'll have to reestimate the cost of that material, which would probably be the easiest if that could happen, but I kind of, I wouldn't think that would work. So the other option would be to re, of your two would be to redesign the path. And I would think that would be a lot because that's going all the way back to the beginning and billing hours to the landscape architect to redesign it. Of course, that would be in house, so that might not be as bad. I just feel like all the things would come out to be. I mean, it's all gonna. You're gonna lose money. This is time. What is um? What if it's only one tree? I know uh, we have a little freedom here. That there are some vaguenesses about the scenario. If it's only a couple of trees, and only designing instead of redesigning, you know, six miles of path that you only have to redesign. 200 feet in two different places would that be a reasonable do you think that would be a reasonable adjustment yeah i guess that would be a discussion with the client that's the problem with some trees 
Um, it's existing trees? It says the tree root protection specification. So it doesn't really say how many trees there are or how long it is or if it's just one tree or... If they're new or old. Correct. Well, let's assume they're old and just scoot them over, or new and scoot them over. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, uh, what about the only using the one and a half inches? I don't necessarily think it's a good idea, but um, knowing what the lifespan of that is and what the contractor's material guarantee, I feel like we should at least discuss it. Do you guys know what the lifespan of uh, asphalt is? I think it depends on the tree roots under it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, and then do you know what, um, does anybody know what the material guarantee is for asphalt? The what? Material guarantee? She yeah, said, I'm curious ahead. what she meant by that. To add to the asphalt conversation um, about the effects on tree roots, it reminds me of a conversation I had with one of the forestry professors at Purdue um, when they were talking about uh, these early stages of laying asphalt and actually it's not what occurs afterwards of the killing of the tree roots but the initial laying of the asphalt and the surge of heat that's been put to the ground actually can cause immediate damage to any existing tree roots so there is that consideration and the thicker you go the longer that heat is uh, pushing through into that soil scarring those tree roots and it's actually worse than what you would think. Um, we think tree roots pushing a concrete surface uh, walkway up because it's trying to obtain water, air, any type of nutrients, but the laying of the asphalt actually does much, much worse damage immediately, especially if the tree is already in place. If the heat do damage to the, re uh, the, to the tree roots, what if um, take depths, uh, otherwise we change the asphalt to uh, heavy duty concrete, so um, that might be solved the problem. Well, even so, there are uh, you know, plenty of viable options out there. There's a, uh, can't recall the name of this fine crushed limestone, but a, yeah. a flexible uh, crushed limestone that can pack to almost be concrete like, where you could still put a wheelchair on it, right. anyone could walk on it, vehicles could drive on it but it's easily replaceable, easily fixable, and allows uh, air, um, water to pass through, and you don't have the worry of immediately pushing heat into that soil and scarring those roots. Yeah, I agree. Like uh, the path in the National Mall uh, in Washington, D.C., they have those uh, crashed uh, limestone uh, compact path, and uh, it works really well. Yeah. Might might be cheaper too. Yeah, right. But even so, would that be worthy of an open discussion in the real world? If this was somehow screwed up, let's say uh, it was said by this was the landscape architect's fault. Is this a point where they kind of recollaborate and say, okay, let's turn this negative into a positive? What can we do here to uh, help fix the situation? Yeah, and I would say, from my standpoint, thinking as a professional landscape architect. Um, this has already been designed, approved, bid on, bought, and it's being constructed. So you've made a commitment to someone for something. And I feel like that this problem, it came from the office from the very top. So I think the responsibility and for this ethics project, it should be the landscape architect just simply has to step up. And this is all solved by a little extra grading time to like the problem statement we have says that you can add grading to the project and everything becomes okay and that's something the landscape architect can do so I think it just comes um, if a legal document has to be typed and signed by the contractor to keep them from being uh, financially liable for it so be it but basically whatever legal thing needs to happen 
send it back to the office, the landscape architect as quickly and efficiently as possible, does a new grading plan, um, eats the cost of their labor in-house, and then sends the new CD packet back mm -hmm. to the construction people and gives the client still exactly what they planned. And really the grading and thing is just the functional thing that the client's not really gonna care about anyway. What it comes down to is us eating the cost and giving them still what we promised in the first place. I'll, uh, I'll add that this is a municipal uh, project, right? Um, and dealing with uh, municipalities can be trickier in terms of changing the bill of goods, so to speak. So um, just knowing, being aware that having to do a rewrite and getting things reapproved and all that fun garbage uh, will likely be time time consuming and that the LA would, um, it would probably be in their best interest to keep the cost on that as well. And if there are any additional costs incurred by the city. Right, I think it's just a misfortune of not double checking something in the CDs and specs before they went out and uh, we can grade. So that's something we can just do quickly, hopefully, and move on. It does kind of, uh, you know, even coming from students going out soon to find jobs, the difference of half an inch of how much, uh, how much conflict that can actually bring up. You know, it seems like something that could be easily fixed, uh, but there's so much more underneath to it all. Right, and we were just given in the statement that. We, the contractors know that all that would need to be done is more extensive grading. So we can just use that in the LA 460 handout to hide under and say that it's going to happen just from a little grading. <laughs> um, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and add uh, something else from the, uh, the city side of things is that it's in the city's best interest to have that uh, material at the proper thickness uh, because the first of all the faster it deteriorates the more it's going to cost the city in the long run because they're going to have to replace that sooner but then also um, they would be likely be more subject to third-party lawsuits if it's not done correctly and it falls apart and people trip or fall or whatever right and then that that's what the scenario you just gave would be the city basically eating the money for this mistake and then I'm surprised that the problem statement offered the contractor taking that because pretty much every scenario is someone else eating the cost of the problem we caused other than us. So I would be surprised even if a contractor would offer that, really. And I don't know. I feel like as a professional, you should step up and say, no, that's okay. We'll take care of that. But never know. So would you all like to move on to maybe taking a position from the scenario and saying what you might specifically do if that was your job title? Sure. I think uh, Totro, I think it was discussed Totro and was it? No, it was uh, Bryce, you and I would be in the field who would possibly be the ones having to fix the problem. These are the LA workers. Right, the yeah. LA yeah. workers. And uh, then is the boss, the yeah. LA boss. I'm the code enforcer, and that leaves Billy the uh, client, the city, right? Right, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so who wants to go first? Well, I think um, whoever's the boss should start off by saying basically the decision we you think you would make after the discussion we just had, and then the rest of us will re react to that, and probably the client last saying how they feel about that. Okay. Uh, hi, um, our office um, we, uh, figured out the, there's a problem of the past that conflict with the tree, uh, the tree root protection. And uh, we have uh, several uh, op, uh, solutions for you to choose. Uh, first one, we think uh, maybe we can 
uh, remove, uh, we can move the path and uh, regrading the area. The second uh, option is uh, we can change the material from asphalt to concrete or uh, uh, crushed uh, limestone uh, com uh, compact path. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is uh, the two options that uh, maybe you can choose well one of them and uh, we can fix this problem really quickly as as the client I think I'm going to go with the um, the material change because I like I like where the path is now it's a good uh, good direction and as long as the material has the same longevity I think that it'll work well in that situation and as one of the landscape workers who grew up adoring the Lorax and the trees and the wonderful <laughs> landscape, I would agree with the client and echo that after seeing various uses of asphalt and the dying of trees, there have been a number of times where I've had to witness the removal of trees post uh, asphalt installation. Right. As the other worker, I'm glad that this was seen before we laid the asphalt so I don't have to rip it all up and start over and aside from that i get paid hourly so do what you gotta do <laughs> as the uh code enforcer i think using the uh concrete or the uh crushed stone would be just fine um it provides accessibility to everyone who would like to use the space and uh so shouldn't subject the city to any undue lawsuits or, or anything else okay Wonderful. So does anyone have any closing thoughts before I end this live feed? I'd just like to say you guys all seem really confident and I trust your judgment. Thanks, Thank Billy. You. It's been a pleasure working with you. <laughs> all right, then. We'll see you later. All right. See you.